Hey guys, it's your international guide here, and today I have a special guest, Adisha. I'm not going to butcher your last name, so please say. Adisha Wagmarie. Yes. Um, she is a community educator in resident life at the University of Oklahoma, and I thought she would be the ideal person to discuss why you should become an RA at your university. I actually was asked to be an RA at ECU, but in a really weird role. <laughs> It was specific to international students, so what I was asked to do was be an on-call person um, for incoming international students and late night hours and things like that. Um, they didn't really explain the role to me that well, but they did give me a really good uh, pay and things like that. And so I had, got handed of this phone and they were like, okay, and if anybody calls, you just go out, give them a key and lead them to your room, give them a little bit of a briefing and then call the RE in the morning and let them know they moved in. Okay, great. So when I first started, it was like really really relaxed and calm and then when the when the you know, main movement hit that's when I started getting calls at like 2 3 in the morning and I was like what is happening but no one really explained to me what my position was but that's what they needed they needed like an international liaison so I was like a I was uh, like a how would you say like the testing person for this role and after some time they were like okay I don't think this is working and then I decided I myself was like I can't do this anymore because I was an athlete in school as well so mm -hmm. I couldn't do that and that was one working with me. So I decided to stop. So if I were to choose, I'd go back to a traditional RA role, which is what you did. Yeah. And so the three benefits to that would be financial, interpersonal, like you, the financial benefits, interpersonal skills, and then finally like building a network, which includes like your resume as well. Um, so the first is the financial. I think the financial comes with a stipend usually. So and what 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 are I guess we could be we could be specific compared to I, like for East Central, they paid for the dorm um, along. So they you got you got to pick what kind of meal plan you get, which usually you don't. Um, you usually have uh, limited options of what you can do depending on what dorm you're in at East Central University. Um, they they uh, they're flexible in allowing you to pick. I chose the cheapest option so that my tuition could be very low. Uh, and then they paid for my dorm and they also gave me a monthly stipend. And that varies from university to university. Some university may cover all of your housing, but if it's more expensive, they might do partial payments. So can you like tell us what it's like at OU? So at OU, we cover full room and board and we give a um, stipend and the stipend is quite low, it's not like a very high stipend, but that's because the room and board that's offered is quite high. Do so it's like, it a, you know. Like, what's like the average cost? Um, of going here? Yeah, like uh, housing room. So housing here is around five 5,000, I would say. 5, Three 000. to 5,000, yeah. something like that. And so. Per semester. So keep that in mind. So like you can only work up to 20 hours a week as a regular international student. And like here is 725. So that's a, roughly 600 bucks a month. 600 bucks a month times four months. That's 2400 bucks a month. So you get paid 2400 bucks a month. Right. And then. But what if you had to pick between either 2400 bucks or taking $5,000 off your tuition, which would you pick? because no other job on campus is going to offer that kind of benefit. So immediately you get that 5,000 and then you get a monthly stipend. So you get both and there isn't a job on campus that's going to beat that. Mm -hmm. And then like, is there any flexibility with like your meal plan like at ECU? So there's a little bit of a flexibility there, but I would say that most, we have a generalized plan, which is just like that you get seven meals and then you get meal points. And so you can go and get meals um, throughout the week with those seven meals and then you can also get use your meal points as in, in addition to that in case you run out of meals you have meal points to back you up um, but yeah that's what we have and then at East Central University because it was a very small university there was a lot of um, responsibilities that each resident assistant had like we had on calls we had desk shifts um, we had the regular we had to do like door decorations um, and then be on, uh, I said on call already, uh, and then um, participate on on-campus uh, on campus activities, um, be there for our residents. And checkouts. And checkouts and enforce, um, enforce uh, school regulations. Is, that, is it the same at OU where like they it's, have? It's very similar. We okay. have, the only, the only thing we wouldn't do is desk shifts. We have desk staff to do that. Uh, so they don't, the RACI don't do that. They do 
Dodex, they do intentionals, which is the conversations with the residents. They do um, uh, they do the events, the programming, things like that. Uh, but they, I wouldn't say that they do any guest shows. I think that's the major difference. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, what other benefits would you say there are? So, I think when you become an RA, the, there's a lot of things you learn in the process of becoming an RA. Mo- most importantly, you learn time management. Yeah. Because to be an RA is to do many things at once, I would say. Yeah. Um, being an RA is understanding that this is what's required of you, and you're also a student, and this is what's required of you, and also in your personal life, this is what's required of you trying to manage all of those things and put them down and be like this is how I'm going to run my week and following that schedule so time management is a really important skill you learn um, secondly working with different types of people you know um, as international students we always like to think that we're so like um, special I think, no just we have this like very well developed brain you know because we're ah. from somewhere else I think ah, yeah. a lot of us think yeah. that way yeah. and then we kind of get with it we kind of get like a student from somewhere completely different from us and we're like I'm not really sure how to interact or yeah, where, where to yeah, start and so that, then yeah. you learn that you know and so that's really important for you too developing how to um, speak with others and communicate and so you learn that and then um, group process you know working with others on a team working with a partner making sure you take responsibility when there's mistakes done you know all of those things are really important for the workplace and building a network with like really higher ups in the university mm. so all of these things lead up to that right. um, and I, so, and then also too is uh, one well, two major things that are beneficial that you can apply everywhere in life is conflict mm-hmm. resolution oh, yes. uh, and so like resolving conflicts between re- um, residents and roommates whether that's either they could be roommates or suite mates or neighbors um, being able to figure out what the issue is and find a common denominator where you can resolve their issues and sometimes it doesn't end sometimes it ends messy and sometimes everyone's happy, but being able to handle those situations and also being a leader, like it, you, you have to develop leadership skills and understanding, also being able to empathize with people to understand where they're coming from, but also knowing when to be assertive to uh, enforce rules because that is a major part of being a resident assistant, at least at, at um, East Central University. Um, like certain times you could be em- uh, empathetic and understand where they're coming from and then certain times you, you have to step back and enforce the regulations. Those are important skills that um, being a resident director help you refine. Resident assistant. Sorry. Why do I, why do I keep saying resident director? Maybe I want to be, maybe secretly I want to be a resident director. That's fine. You be a resident director. <laughs> but uh, um, yes, being a resident assistant. Um, so one other thing is learning about American culture yes. and I think that that's something that really stands out in this role because you get to, yeah. you have to program for majority American students and sometimes you yourself don't know what to do and so it's really it's really good for you because you, you're having to be in this new country and this is a good way to kind of get into that, okay, what do Americans do during this time of the year? Like football games, yeah. tailgating, this Tail- kind of thing. Understanding yep. what those things mean um, is really important for you to try and like understand what way you're at and what you're doing here you know um it's not saying to be american but to understand american culture so to say yeah and then free t-shirts i got a lot of free t-shirts i mean at least 15 t-shirts from just being a resident new wardrobe right yeah yeah Yeah. and i and i still wear a lot of them today to work so yeah yeah and then a next point outside of that is networking and resume building, which, yeah. Yes. So networking, I think, it helps you so much because you are meeting people from different majors, you are meeting, consistently meeting with, like, even your coworkers can be from different majors, you're meeting the higher-ups who are, like, maybe your bosses or bosses around you or when you're sitting at these, like, uh, RA galas or dinners, you're meeting people from, you know, the leadership team there. And so connecting with these people are really important because they are going to be a part of your outside network you know you have an inside network outside network that outside network is really really important for you so when you come back and you need a job or something and you they're like oh yes i remember you received this award for this that's where you want to make sure that that outside network is like available for you always um and you may think okay we can network with these people without being a resident there uh 
I almost said it again. Without being a resident assistant, which may be true, but the thing is, as you as you progress in your major, you begin to interact with less people. Like when you become a senior, you're so consumed with your own um, degree and trying to graduate, and and people drop out, and your network closes, and the people that you would actually interact with. Um, um, decreases because it's more major specific you don't take gen ed classes and so you don't get to interact with a lot of people anymore but being a resident assistant allows you to consistently interact with new people and improve your network and then <laughs> and then lastly um, building your resume there are a ton there are tons of different skill sets that you can put down for your resume. Like when I first graduated, I had I think 12 to 13 different skill sets that I had under my resident assistant position. And what I would do is, depending on the position I applied for, I would remove some of those skill sets and keep some that so that it's more suited towards that position, like time management, um, budgeting, crisis management, cri conflict resolution. Because communication is always a big factor, no matter where you could be no matter where you go, being able to communicate your issue or being able to be a mediator between others is very important. Yeah, um, so with our position, there's so much you can do on your resume with that, like just so much. It's it's not just something that sits on your resume and then people are like, oh, it's it's something that you, maybe your boss who you're about to speak with in your interview was themselves an RA, yep. that RA was good to them. Yep. And so they're like, oh, you're an RA? My RA was like, it's just a talking point. So it's good for you. It's good to have those good stories. You keep them in your head before your interview, things like that. that that's why it's a resume builder. Yeah, and then honestly, being a res being a resident assistant, I influence a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, just moving all of that out, I there were people who were very uh, who were at a very vulnerable situation or time in their life, and I and I think that I had a positive impact to help them get past that obstacle or get past that issue which they were going through. And so knowing that, okay, I helped this person or I tried or I made a slight difference could have a significant, which for you might be small, but for them may be a significant turning point for them and to help them get over. Because college honestly is one of the most overwhelming experiences that you go through life. And so having a resident assistant there to make that impact I, I think is is very important, and so understanding that you also have a interpersonal effect on people um, is important. But um, it's also good that we talk about some of the drawbacks of being a resident assistant, so that people are aware of what they're getting themselves into. Because being a resident assistant is very time consuming and restrictive. Very restrictive, when especially if you want to travel home in December or in end of semester time when it comes to that it's really hard yep. when others are traveling home you probably can't because you have to assist with checkouts you have to assist with um, all the closing stuff that happens during that time and transition time and so really understanding those things those factors and how they play into your um, plan that you already have set up for when you want to go home or travel or anything like that um, not only just one. them, but also on the weekends. Like if you yeah. have, if you're on call, you can't travel. Um, you may be called four o'clock in the morning to go open someone's door because they forgot their key inside their room. Um, understanding that, understanding that you can't participate in certain activities because you are representing the university. Like parties. Yep. Um, and also understanding that it's not a traditional nine to five job. Like. There, the hours aren't really counted, so you could be called anytime throughout the week to come on an emergency to come and, and partake and, and play a role in resolving whatever issue is going on. And so it's not an easy job. It's um, challenging at times, but it's also fun. It's a unique experience, and it has many benefits. So I, I think that's something that every international students should consider because they're in terms of positions that you go on campus that there's no other position that will trump being a resident director unless resident assistant unless you're like some athlete where you get a full ride and then like that's a different conversation, a whole but, different conversation. but yeah so but for everyone like that's a position that every international student 
is um, eligible for, and if you're not, then like that should be a, a big. Act. Personally, for me, I wouldn't attend a university that doesn't allow international students to be a resident assistant. But um, that's it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. Ring that bell. Um, that way, you'll be notified of all of the latest uh, uploads and my ongoing activities. Um, give a round of applause to Adisha for being a great guest. And thanks, guys.